This is a video on force, more specifically on Newton's three laws. It's really great to know these three laws because you can use them uh, in argument as proof of a claim. Take for example, someone has a gun and they fire a bullet. And the question is saying, explain why the person who is holding the gun uh, feels the recoil as their hands fly backwards. And simply stating, this is due to Newton's third law, is a perfect explanation and no more needs to be said because everything about Newton's third law goes ahead and entails all the details. So let's go one at a time. The first law is pretty well known. It's objects in motion tend to stay in motion and objects at rest tend to stay at rest. And this is unless a force is acted upon them. So if you're driving your car and you're going 70 miles an hour and you pull your foot off the accelerator, your car is going to keep going. It's going to keep going for a long time. It will eventually stop, and that's because there are external forces, in particular friction and air resistance. But if there was no friction or air resistance, your car would keep going. In space, this is a, a great feature because since there is very little external forces, and quite often they're essentially negligible, objects in space are just going to keep moving. So, for example, as we send uh, probes to Mars, the probe is not constantly burning fuel on its way to Mars. Once it gets going to Mars, the engine is shut off and it just drifts in space. Since there are no external forces, its inertia, or Newton's first law, is going to carry it there. Newton's first law is also commonly known as the law of inertia. And inertia is the reluctance of an object to change its state of motion. The important word here is change. So, Let's imagine this. You have two baskets on wheels. One is filled with floating toys for a pool, and the other is filled with rocks, which is hard to push and why. You don't have to think about it very long. You should say the rocks, of course, but we're more concerned about why the rocks. Why not the foam floating toys? It's because the rocks have more mass, and mass and inertia are directly related. So if something has more mass, it has more inertia. But let's go a little bit deeper. Now they're moving and you want to stop them. The floating toys, the foam ones, you really don't have to put in much effort to stop them. But the basket of rocks, you're going to be positioning your feet like you're about ready to play tug of war. And so which one's harder? It's obviously the rocks. Why is it the rocks? It's again because they have more inertia. And as I said just a few moments ago, inertia is the reluctance to change a state of motion. It's not the reluctance to move. Once something's in motion, it wants to stay in motion. Once something's at rest, it wants to stay at rest. The second law is F equals MA. That is to say force equals mass times acceleration. Force is measured in newtons, mass in kilograms, and acceleration in meters per second squared. So again, it is the sum of all forces applied to an object and it ha is going to be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration the object experiences due to that force. It's important to note once again this is all of the forces. A common mistake is for students to use F equals MA for any force they choose. F equals MA only works once you have the sum of all of the forces. Once you've added up gravity and normal and friction and anything else that may be present. So let's take a look at this problem. We have two chickens battling over a crate of food. We want to know what is the acceleration of the crate given its mass of 5 kilograms and the following information. So we have the normal force and gravity. If you're not really sure what those are yet, don't worry. It's not important to this problem. In fact, they will cancel out. So it's as though we can treat it as though they were never even there. We have chicken A on the left pulling at 10 newtons and chicken B on the right pulling at 15. So the y direction, as I said just a moment ago, cancels out. The x direction is 15 for the chicken on the right, minus 10 for the chicken on the left, and it totals 5. So the net force is 5 newtons. All of the forces added up is 5. Even though that's less than any one of the given forces, it didn't matter because a lot of the forces ended up canceling each other out. The mass is 5 kilograms, so if we use F equals MA and rewrite it by dividing both sides by M, A will equal F over M, or 5 over 5, 
and the acceleration is therefore one meter per second squared. The third law is also a pretty well known law. It's for every, rea for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The two key words are equal and the second key word is opposite. It's very simple but it's very easy to confuse people on this. So let's see if you can get this question right. The earth pulls on you with a force of 600 newtons. With what force do you pull back on the earth? Since you have mass and the earth has mass, you're both gravitationally attracted towards each other. The earth is pulling you at 600. How hard are you pulling back on the earth? If you trust in the third law, the answer is very simple. It's 600 newtons. The only exception is the earth is pulling you down and you are therefore pulling the earth up equal but opposite. Now you may think, well wait a second, if I jump out of an airplane, I'm the one falling because of gravity. The earth is doing a terrific job of yanking me down, yet I don't pull the earth up. How is that possible if we apply the same amount of force? And it's because although you do apply the same amount of force, you have the greater acceleration because you have uh, less mass. Recall, F equals MA. Force is equal. The acceleration is not. The acceleration is what's going to determine you moving. Since the Earth has a much, much, much bigger mass than you, its acceleration is much, much, much less. Uh, let's talk about this. If you ever hit something, maybe it was part of a sport or frustration or just for fun, uh, let's use boxing as an example. A boxer hits his opponent with his fist, and the force is 3,500 newtons. What kind of force is applied back onto his fist? It's going to be 3,500 newtons, and it's going to be directed backwards. This is why, if you've ever hit something, it hurts, because you got hit back. Maybe you kick something out of frustration and your toes really hurt afterwards. It's because however hard you kick that object, it kicked you right back. You cannot possibly hit something without it hitting you back. So you may think, well then how come sometimes, say for example in hockey, when two players collide into each other, one of them skates away just fine and the other one is injured, shouldn't they both feel the same amount of pain? Well, now it becomes a little bit more of a biological question. They both felt the same amount of force. But, let's say the injured player took a blow to um, the back of his head. It's weaker, it's going to hurt more. The person who went ahead and checked him, checked him with his shoulder. He was able to use his shoulder and his muscles in his arm to help cushion his blow. So yes, they both felt the same amount of force, but the person delivering the check was able to absorb that force much more efficiently than the person receiving it. So yes, it is true that there is a way to hit something, and even though it's going to hit you back, it won't hurt you as bad uh, as in that type of example. Well, that's all I have. Thank you for watching.